Hello everybody! Welcome to another video from Code Shorts with Profanis. Angular version 15 has been released and again the Angular team released great features. One of them is the Directive Composition API. In this video, I will try to explain what this is, how it works and we will also see some use cases. For those of you who are not familiar with the term Directive, we will start with the very basics. No worries, it won't last long. Till the end of this video, you will know all it needs to start crafting and composing your directives. So, let's get started. As said, let's start with the very basics and saying the following that the directives do not own their own HTML template. The directives change the appearance and the behavior of a host element, who of course has an HTML template. And let's see the following example. Let's say that we have a component element, which is the host element, and we want to change the appearance and the behavior of this host element. In this example, we will see the following. We want on hover to make this element bold, and also again on hover, we want this element to be underlined. We need two different things. We can achieve this by creating two different directives. The first one will be the bold directive, which of course will be responsible to set the host element as bold, and the other one will be the underline directive, and again this will be responsible only for the underline. And the code will look like this. Here we will have the bold directive, and here we will have the underline directive. The end result will be to have an element which will have the CMP, bold and other line at the same time. This is the first approach. Then we will try the following. We will try to use the composition API and for this one we will create the mouse ender directive and this will be composed by bold and underline. And the end result will be this. We will have the host element and we will use only one directive, the mouse ender. And behind the scenes, this will use the bold and underline. And then we will try to improve this even more. Since we are talking about host directives, we can apply these directives in the host element without even use this one. How to do this? We will see later on in this video. So, Let's jump into the code and start creating and composing our directives. I have just updated to Angular 15 and let's start by creating two different directives. The bold directive, the underline directive, and you know what? I will also create a component which will be my host component to give it a try. So let's create ngg-d. Under directives, I'm going to have my bold directive this has to be a standalone, otherwise we cannot compose the directives if they are not standalone. And I also want to skip the tests. And let's also create here the underline. And again, this has to be standalone, otherwise we cannot compose it. And skip test for now. And I will create one component and this is going to be under components and I will name it tester. And again, I want this to be standalone, skip test and why not to have inline style and also inline template. So now we have the directives, bold directive, underline directive and this is our tester component. At first, I will use the app tester component into the app component HTML. And of course, we have to grab the tester component and go to the app module and import it here so that we can make use of that. Nice. So let's now focus into the ball directive at first. What we want to achieve here is the following. Whenever the user mouse enter the host element, we want to convert this to bold, and when we mouse leave, we want to revert the font weight. So let's give it a try. At first, we need into the constructor to have our host element. 
and this is going to be the element ref and this is going to be a, for a generic type and I will be like yeah this is going to be just an HTML element and I want to apply like we said we want to apply two events the first one is the mouse render can, and the other one is the mouse leave so on mouse enter I want to do something and on mouse leave I want to do something else And now we have somehow to link the mouse render and mouse leave to specific events. So for this, I will use the host listener. I'm listening to the host element for a specific event. And this is going to be the mouse ender. And let's use the same here. But this time, this is going to be mouse leave. Since we have the host element here, we can now go and do the following. This host element, we will grab the native element and since this is a generic type of HTML element, we have full intelligence and I want the style and specifically the font weight equals bold. And when we mouse leave, I want this to be normal. So this is the very first step. And now let's give it a try and use this one, the up bold here into the host element, the up tester. And to make this happen, of course, we need to use the bold directive into my app module. So I will import it here. And now let's go to the browser to see what we have. If I mouse enter, we can see that this is bold and on mouse leave, this is back to normal. Now let's try to create the underlying directive. I will fast forward a bit the video and then I will explain what is happening. So what I'm doing here is the following, that again I have my host element and on mouse gender I'm changing the text decoration to underline dotted and the text decoration color to be by default I have black and then from the host element we can change the black to red, green or whatever color we wish. And on mouse leave the text decoration is none and the text decoration color again is none. So we are reverting the styling that we have applied. So this is it and now let's go and the underline directive, I will go to the app module, use it here and then we need to grab the selector, the app underline and we will go to the app component HTML and apply it here into the app tester. Now if we go to the browser we expect this to be underlined and dotted like we can see and if we mouse leave this turns back to normal. Now let's give it a try and try to compose this one, the bold directive and underline directive. And for this reason, I will create another directive and I will name it mouse gender. NGGD and under directives, I want to use my mouse gender. And again, I want to skip the tests and I made a mistake, as you can see, I have just updated the app module and this means that the directive is not standalone. So let's go here and remove this from the declarations and I will go to the mouse render directive and I will simply mark this as standalone. So standalone equals to true. So what we will try to do is the following. I will grab the selector app mouse render and into the app component, I want to replace these two directives, the bold and underline with the mouse render. And I want the mouse render to apply both bold and underline. To make this happen, I will use this property, the host directives. And like we said, I want to use the bold directive and also I want to use the underline directive. And now let's grab the mouse ender, the class name, and I will go to the app module. 
I no longer need to define the bold directive and the underlying directive here, but I need to have the mouse ender directive. Let's import this and let's go to the browser to see what we have. Nice, it works just fine. So we managed to compose two different directives, the bold and underline. How about now? So let's close everything in order not to get confused. How about now? If I want to change the underlying color, if you remember here we have an input. And since we are using the underlying directive here, you would expect if I have here color equals to red, for example, the underlying to be red, but it's not, it's still black. The reason is that whenever we're using the host directives and we are specifying a directive like this, we do not expose any input or output. To expose some of the inputs or the outputs, we have to explicitly define them. And for this reason, we will use here an object. And I will say that this is my directive, the underlying directive. And I want to expose these inputs. Which one? The color. So now, if we go to the browser, we will see that the underline is red. And we can also change the name. I can define an alias name and, for example, I can be like the underlying color is matched with this color. So the underlying color now should replace this from the host element. Now let's go to the browser. And yeah, everything works just fine. So this is how we use the Composition API. We managed to create the mouse under directive and we're using the bold and the underline. And you know what? Let's go to the bold directive and let's try to use also an output. And the output, I will name it just hover, equals to new event emitter and whenever we mouse render, I want to emit this event. So this hover, sorry, this hover dot emit. So this is it. And now, so similar to the inputs, if we want to expose the outputs, we have to explicitly define them. So the bold directive should be replaced by an object and the directive will be this. And then I want my outputs the outputs to expose to be the hover. And now into the app component HTML, here I can be like the hover will do something specific. And this is going to be the hover event handler, no more than this. And let's go now into the source code and create this method, yeah, and just a console log here with the message hover. And this is it. As we can see here, we have the hover. And similar again to the inputs, we can change the name. So into the mouse ender directive, where I'm composing the bold and the underline, I want to change the name, the name of the hover. And I want to have it like bold hover. And now I need to change the hover to bold hover into my host element, which is here. So this is bold hover. And now again, I expect everything to work just fine. Nice. And now how about if somehow we want to completely remove this, the app mouse ender? like that. So let's give it a try. So currently we have the mouse ender directive, which is which uses the bold and underline. And if we go to our tester component, we have just the tester works, standalone, the template, the styles, no more than this. How about now if we use here the host directives? And specifically, I want to use, let's say, the mouse ender the mouse and the directive. So now I expect whenever I use the app tester 
to reuse the mouse and the directive without even specifying you know what let me delete everything here and start slowly whenever i use now the app tester i expect to use the mouse render directive which from his side uses the bold and underline so let's go to the browser and this is it we have the bold and underline how cool this is and the great with this is that we can now go for example into the tester and perhaps we don't need to have the mouse render or we want to use only the bold or the underline you name it and how about now the inputs and the outputs in the previous example we had the underline color and also bold and hover and let's close the app component yes we don't need this and into the mouse render we have changed the hover to bold hover and the color to underline color and since we are using the mouse ender directive directly as a host directive into my host i expect these names these alias names to work as expected and let's give it a try and yeah it seems that it works just fine so whenever we hover over test works we can now use the color and we can use also the output as we can see here and let's now try to create one more directive at first let's set the expectations let's assume that we want to have a functionality where when a user clicks on a host element we want to send a message to our server a post message to our server and perhaps this is going to be to handle some events or whatever so this is going to be our use case click and send something and the problem here is that what kind of payload are we going to send to the server the host should define the payload so let's give it a try i'm going to create one more directive nggd under directives and i will name it event yeah this is going to be my name and standalone and again i want to skip the tests and for this example we're going to use http client and so let's go into my imports and use the http client module and now let's go into the event directive and we said that we need to have an http so let's use here http client http client and we want on mouse ender oh sorry on click to do something specific and again we have to use the host listener here and i will listen to the click event and what should happen i want to use this dot http and then i'm going to use a post and yeah i need to also to have a domain let's define a domain here private read only and this is going to be my domain equals this is my domain so let's use here this domain and then we need to define the payload to send the body to send let's say that we want by default to send the user and then we also need to send some data and the data will be defined by the host element so we need here to have the data for now i will have it like type any this is going to be my data and of course i can have a check here if these data are falsy then just throw an error so throw new error and the message will be please define the data and then we need also to have here for example pipe take one and then definitely we need to subscribe so this is going to be the functionality that will run on click and you know what since this is not affecting the change detection it would be a good idea also to run outside of the zone so private this is going to be my ng zone ng zone and this is this ng zone run outside angular so why we need to have this run outside angular the reason is that whenever we have an asynchronous operation 
the change detection run. And for this example, we do not want to run the change detection. So we will have it something like that. Nice. So now we can use the event directive. So let me close this and I will keep this to have it side by side. And we can now use the event directive into my host element, the app tester. So let's go here to the tester component. And into the host directives, I will use this, the event directive. Let's give it a try. If we go to the browser, and if I immediately click here, we can see that we have an error. And the error is, please define the data. How can we define now the data? Into the tester component, I can use a dependency injection, and I will use the inject method, and this is going to be my event directive equals, let's use the inject, and I want to use the event directive, and perhaps into the constructor, engine-init, or wherever. So let's do this into the on-init. Let's implement the interface. Let's have it somehow like this. And into the engine-init, I want the event directive dot data to be just a payload. And the payload could be property one. And this is going to be my value. And the same goes, let's use property two with another value. This is going to be my foo two. Nice. So what we're doing now is that we are providing the data and we expect whenever we run this directive to grab this data and perform the post. So let's go to the browser and specifically into the network. And if I can now click, we can see that, of course, this is 404 because this domain doesn't exist. And if we click into the payload, we can see that we just send the user me and then we have property one with this value and property two with this value. So that was it. This is how we can use the directive composition API. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this video, please share it in the social. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.